Hello, we are Panpod, my name is Thomas, my name is Tassilo, and a very warm welcome to the BPM Masterclass Arts Workshop. <laughs> met us uh, also at a school, like in Berlin, it's called SAE, maybe some people know it, like School of Audio Engineering. And yeah, it was like that, I came in the school and there was like the whole class and actually we were sitting also next to each other, in purpose, you know, in purpose, you know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, and yeah, then you have to introduce you, everyone has to stand up and say like, hello, my name is Thomas and I'm here because I want to make like techno music or rock music or hip hop or something like that. And yeah, we was the only ones who found out we were the only ones who like said okay electronic music. music Everybody is all else was like yeah, here for techno actually. Punk, so the rest of yeah. whatever. So then we saw each other and said like okay cool, you have directly someone you know and yeah this is how it starts and then we have like the first lessons like MIDI lessons. This was actually ten years ago. Uh, this actually eleven years ago. Uh, eleven years ago yeah it was two thousand two. So, so and the reason also why we are here is because we have our tenth anniversary tour now. You know we do like ten years music together now. Uh, as Thomas said, we started at school, like we started uh, with our first productions, our first DJ gigs together. And uh, well, since then, we are a musical couple, you know, yeah. and we made it 10 years now, which is... And actually, personally, I came to techno, um, I was 14 or 15, and we have always, like, I come from the eastern part of Germany, we have always this Polish marketplace, you know, like, all these cheap things, you know. <laughs> So in some other countries, like Asia marketplace or something else. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, nobody know what I mean. Like, we're always like, you know, my grandma was get always, always going there to, to look around. And, and I found like a, like a tape, you know, like, it was like, like an old techno tape. It was not Thunderdome or something like that, you know, like, and, and they said like, hey, I want to have that. And she gave me that and I was putting this tape in this uh, tape recorder and I put it on and I was like, wow, what is that, you know? <laughs> 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 and my, my grandma was like, she was so pissed after I said, why I bought you this fucking tape, you know? <laughs> <laughs> she was like, listen, I'm done, I'm done. That's the reason how I came to it, actually, so. Well, I started later. I started like with 18 before I was listening to hip hop a lot. You know, like I had my five years of hardcore hip hop phase, skateboarding only listening to hip-hop. I started f with 14 uh, DJing hip-hop and uh, then I started yeah, with 18. I came to house music, drum and bass and that kind of stuff. And then actually when I moved to Berlin and when I met him, I started with kind of real underground techno, you know, like he was listening to Richie Horton back in the days, you know, like all these old school minimal uh, Richie Horton stuff. And I totally got into it. I was like straight from the first time I heard it, it was like, yeah. Like That's Plastic it. Man <laughs> and this... Uh, yeah, 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 like all like, you know, Spastic. Yeah, he had also this old classics. concept stuff, you know, and he never released it. It was horrible because he had on YouTube, you know, but, uh, or like on his um, Minus website, or Plastic Man website, but he never released like his concept stuff and I, I love this, this shit, you know, so... Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah so um, told him. So when did you actually start to produce and make uh, music professionally? Well, I would say at school, actually, you know, that, that was the reason why we went to school. Because we both decided, uh, you know, we want to do this as a as a as a living and as a you know as the content of our life. And um, like Thomas and me, we were both like the only ones at this time who did like this kind of music. You know, everybody else, as I said, was like into rock and roll, guitar music. And we were occupying this MIDI studio, like the kind of studios you have upstairs, like a small little cabin, and you know, like I don't know, five square meters, and we were like doing techno beats all the time, you know, and like, everybody was bo like bothered by us and yeah. complaining that we are so loud. Yeah, I was really all. pissed. It was a really small school uh, back yeah. in the days, like, you know, they changed after we finished our course and it's a big school now, but it was really tiny, you know, so there was not a lot of space and, you know, everybody had to, you know, take care of... of share. There was a lesson. Yeah, and we shared a lot yeah. of, you know, base. <laughs> there, there was a place next to the studio, like, it's called Golden Ears, it's a... It's a, it's a it's a lesson for like training your ears with uh, listening sounds like really like yeah, sensitive frequencies, you know, frequencies like you know like really sensitive really careful we're listen, sitting listen. like we're like two meters next to it and all I'm used to like <laughs> 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 and now we can't really concentrate so that was really pissed of us <laughs> and uh, how did you guys come up uh, with your stage name with Panpot where by accident yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no we, we had another name before which was 
pretty stupid, I won't tell. Uh, so we had to find a good name because it got more serious. <laughs> we had like the chance to release on Mobile then and they asked also, okay, how you guys wanna, what kind of name do you wanna have for as an artist uh, name? And then we just had like this little um, audio term dictionary and okay. we just like, you know, checked out all the pages and just like, oh yeah, okay, Pampot, that fits, you know. Like <laughs> It yeah. was. Th that's the whole story, actually. You know, it's boring, yeah. but that's how it is. I would like. I would like to tell you something super <laughs> interesting and exciting, but it's not. Yeah, but <laughs> it, gro it grows then with us, you know, because we always say like, yeah, it's two names, you know, it's pan pot. It is actually and like pan pot two is words and and meter, so it's like a technical term, and yeah, yeah. it's not yeah. pans and pots, and it's we not smoking yeah. pot, and it's <laughs> like, you know, it's nothing. We also, really <laughs> we also really sensitive with the minus in between, you know, it's like pan minus pot. So yeah. if you forget it, we always think eh, 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 you know, <laughs> the minus have to be there. Because from the beginning on. <laughs> and um, you talked about uh, your first release on uh, Mobile. Can you tell us a bit about that? Uh, how long did it take you to get to that first release after school or after studying? And it, was, it was actually still, I mean, we did music back in the days with Marco Reisman also. He's mm -hmm. part of um, Luna City Express and part of Up On You Records. And um, we met him also at school. And um, you know, one day we met at school. Uh, I think no, no, we don't met him in school. It was like, okay, <laughs> we had like this uh, party. Like the it was an exam party. Exam yeah, party from exams. our first exam. On we, I bring like um, turntables and, and we both bring records and we want to play it on exam party. So we start playing, or we want to start playing, we say like, fuck, we have no headphones. Or Marco say actually, I I'm also a DJ, I have like a studio around the corner and I have headphones there. And then we send him over, he bring the headphones and then we start talking. Like, hey, are you making awesome music? Are you Marco Reisman? You're Fage? Mm -hmm. And then it starts everything together, like a little yeah. bit, yeah? Then we started doing music together with him, and actually we passed our final exam, and that was actually the, yeah, one month, I think one month later, the, the first Poppy and Case, our first re yeah. release on Mobile came we out. We booked Anja at the, the pavilion. We had our parties, like, in, in Berlin, and there was a party in, in a pavilion, it was like in Volkspark Fries, and it's like a little park in the town. And uh, we booked Anja, and Anja and Ralf told us, yeah, we want to start a label, and um, we're looking for some new artists, and we have some stuff, send it over. And we had some tracks ready, but not real ready. So and then, like, I think three weeks later, or four weeks later. Yeah, it was the, the finishing phase of the, the yeah. release, actually. We but send it, took, it, it, took us, it took us, like, almost one month to, to yeah, really work it was on our first, first demo tape, and they take it directly. It's like, oh, yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> I know other people are sending 100 demo tapes out, you know, so, yeah, and, like, yeah. Yeah, we were lucky. Yeah, we were really lucky with it. <laughs> a lot of luck. <laughs> <laughs> and um, how long did do you reckon it took for you to reach your big breakthrough, releasing on labels, touring the world, and your music being recognized globally? Well, I would say, you know, the, the album, first, right? the first, the first and only album we ever did. It was released in 2007. It took us about half a year to produce it. And the pre-single of this album, it was called Charlie. This was a real success concerning sales, let's say. You know, we saw, okay, we almost sold like 10,000 records wow. back in the days. I mean, like, yeah. it was not super much, but it was good for a record. And that was the first sign for us, okay, I mean, you know, that's kind of serious numbers and, and you know, that there could be the potential to do more, you know. And I think with the, the album, it also started, like, the gigs got more serious. It got more, you know, we got more gigs and more shows. And, um, yeah, I think that was, like, 2007, mm -hmm. you know started to get and um, and how would you define your music today and do you think as an artist it's good to concentrate just on one style or to experiment with different mm. genres and I think if you are a new artist and you just want to uh, you know come out and, and and get attention you should focus on a certain style on your you know like you should get a signature sound but then as soon as you reach it, I think it makes sense to really open, get open-minded and, and try out new th stuff and you know, work as a musician also. You know? And especially if you have the, the chance to do an album, you should use, in my opinion, you should use an album as a platform to, to, to show what you can do. You know? That's my recommendation usually. And um, um, what was the first part of the question? <laughs> um, how would you define your, I mean, okay, uh, your music <laughs> today? Yeah. Yeah, it's like ch it's changed, of course. It's right? Changed, we, we yeah. Was like when we started, we was of course a little bit deeper. It was really deep. So it and was, it uh, was like deep, deep and 
That was not too deep, but it's about the time of, of this kind of Sometimes deep. Sometimes too deep for dancing, I would yeah, say. Yeah, too deep for <laughs> dancing, but, but the, the time was like that also. Like, people also don't expect like real rave parties, or more like, like deep parties, like especially Berlin. So, and yeah, but it changed like after a while, yeah, of course, um, because also the music changed and you go, as a, we, are, we are also people, we always go a little bit with the flow, not because we want to stay up to date, but it's like, it's like that. When you're working with it, you know, you go with it. If you're working for a fashion label, you also go with a fashion a little bit. And you're also working like, also in my opinion, so, and we changed our sound also a little bit more to techno again, and yeah, back to the roots, you know, like yeah. to, to old techno sounds, and, and yeah, also housey stuff. It's also different, you know, like we, we production-wise, we are really more techno and more dark, I yeah. would say. When we DJ, we are more open-minded to all different kinds of, you know, electronic dance music with a four to the floor bass drum, I would say. Yeah. You know, I mean, we like to play deep house sometimes. You know, it depends. Like, it always depends which party you play. You know, if you play a rooftop party or beach party, mm. it's usually it's not bang yeah. techno. <laughs> <you know>? This <laughs> is an important thing. Also, I think when you're DJing, you know, like I mean, like I really like when people like always following straight his style and everything. It's cool because you always know what you get. You know, but it's mostly like for the hardcore fans. Yeah. In the end, everyone is talking about the party, how nice it is, how nice well, it was. Even if you Steven the told me he's playing deep house lately. Yeah. If you rock so the place with your iPhone with the deep house on it, you know, everyone is talking about how nice you rock the place, you know. There's some people that say like, yeah, but you play with the iPhone. But no one will listen to it. It's more like, rock it. That's it, yeah. you know. So that's an important thing. So you're you know? saying it's important to be versatile yeah. as a DJ. And I yeah. think so, definitely. Yeah. And also depending no on the venue, yeah. yeah. They can expect your sound, but when everyone's standing around and do nothing, and it's like, the party's over after an hour, you know. Yeah. Try to rock it. <laughs> That's the important thing. And uh, can you tell us a bit about your creative process in the studio? Like how you work together as a duo? Well, it's, uh, you know, back to back, same as DJ. You know, it's uh, usually we start together. Tr I mean, like lately we started, you know, separately. Like Thomas is working in his studio. We have two studios. I'm working in my studio and then the finishing process is together. Um, we found out this is more efficient for us right now because we get more stuff done and we have more and we creativity also, going on. We have on also less time right, right now. And we have less time. <laughs> yes. We have to find a solution to do something, yeah, uh, qu uh, working quicker, you know, because in the past we had time to sit in the studio, relax and drink coffee, have a PlayStation there, you know, like having breaks, like for a half day sometimes. You don't have that anymore. Yeah, half if weeks also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, and, but now you have less time, so you have to work more like... But I mean, if, you know, if you should bring it to the point, it's... You know, we sit there together. Uh, maybe I start on the computer. I ch like I'm looking for a bass drum. Usually, first thing, bass drum, bass line, what kind of bass line sound, and then the most important percussion sounds like snare, hi hats, some other percussions, uh, just elements which create a certain groove yeah, which you like, and you a reach a point of maybe eight to ten um, tracks, you know, and then it's actually the base, base, basic loop of the track. And then we usually start arranging, or we keep on trying to find a, an essential hook line sound or whatever. It's always the hardest part. Yeah, it's the hardest, hardest uh, procedure. Yeah. <laughs> and um, um, tell us a little bit about your studio setup. You said you have two studios. Okay. So, like, what kind of gear you like to use? If it's all uh, digital, or you have some uh, analog synths <coughs> or drum machines, maybe. Um, so I have actually like um, right now like an iMac, it's not the newest one, the older one, and um, yeah, actually so I have not that much analog stuff I have, but I don't use it at the moment, so um, yeah, I mean, what do you want to no, like my sound card and stuff, or like just no. Just okay. what, what you like to use. <laughs> so I, I like, okay, I, actually, I like to use like, yeah, I like to use a machine actually, like that one here. But it's like, I don't use it like, like professional, like, uh, it's like, like more like a like sample, uh, uh, sample source. library for not me. Not like the videos of native <laughs> <laughs> No, no, not like that, like, no, I'm not like that. And yeah, like a lot of, of course, samples from the, from, from other libraries and like a lot of uh, digital synths, like I like the Silent One, Albino I like, um, what I like as well, like then the Omnisphere, like the Spectrosonic stuff. Um, I don't have that much, but I concentrate more like on the stuff what I have, you know, because yeah. I found all for me, because I had a for a while, like a lot of stuff, and I don't get to the end of my tracks because I have too much, I have too much cho choices, you know, yeah, so, yeah. and I found all for me when I have like some, like less things, I use them more and 
coming more to the point, it's more efficient for me. Yeah. But it's my opinion, you know, there's people that think different. So I have also like drums right now in the studio, like a little um, drum setup, but it's just for fun, okay. you know. Then I have like two types of speakers. One is like Adam SX3, and the other one's like it's like a big PA system from Haka, but just uh, it's not for producing, just for listen how it sounds yeah. on a PA system. <laughs> and and uh, stressing my neighbors, <laughs> and yeah, I have some synthesizer stuff, like an analog stuff around, but I don't use it anymore. So I have like a Jomox actually, but I found out like the Jomox is sampled by other people so well, yeah. so I can't sample it like that well like the other people sample. You know, they have me a whole day to make the bass that nice, you know, and buy the CD of it. It's even nicer. So it's like sorry to say or like hard to say, but it's like that. You know, so yeah, that's like, that's it in the end. Like for me. And what software do you uh, like to use? Nah, yeah, I changed like several times. In the first, I, I, in, in the, really in the first, I used like Reason. Then I go to Cubase, and from Cubase to, to Logic, and from Logic to Live right now. So, yeah. but it's like when it's step forward, like always. Some sometimes also like two programs in Rewire. Mm -hmm. But as I would say, I switch to Live right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a most efficiently program for me. You know, you're so fast with it. Sound wise, not always the best, but I prefer more like the workflow than the sound. Okay. So I'm not that only feel time other people. Are Concentrate like, oh, more on the right thing. thing. No, it's even better to bring the good idea into in your computer and be fast than to be like, oh, I have to be mm, that nice. No, no, no. It's not mine. Yeah. Well, I like that. <laughs> you like it. Yeah. But it's a good, it's a good combination of it. Exactly. This is good, you know? That's kind of the dynamics of the duo. Yeah, yeah. exactly, 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 exactly. Well, my studio is a bit different, actually. <laughs> um, I have analog gear. Uh, mainly, like, the summing processing is, is analog. I have uh, an M32 sound card from RME, which is like a DA converter only. With this one, I go with uh, 30 channels, uh, like 15 stereo, 30 mono, into, like, two summing amps, one dangerous music, one Gino and audio. With this, I go through an uh, well in the monitor way. I go through an RP five five zero zero. It's like an EQ, and then into the Manley massive, not not the massive pass, like the Varimu. It's a mastering uh, compressor limiter, and then I record back through the multiphase too. Actually, so the whole pros like the whole um, summing processing is completely analog. I mean, working-wise, I'm on... Why are you laughing? <laughs> no, it's <says> nice. <laughs> um, like, the whole music no, the creation, the whole processing of sounds is <laughs> internally. So it's all, like, with uh, software synthesizers. Same, like, as Thomas said, some more. And uh, also, like, the effects, I use the UAD, like, the big four-core, and all the Waves plugins. Mm -hmm. Not all of them, but mainly. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's basically the, you know, like, the internal processing. And uh, I used to work a lot with Logic and Live and Rewire, but it kind of sucks because Logic sucks in my opinion. There's no more, you know, they don't um, improve this program. There's so many bugs inside which really bug me a lot. So I switched to Live completely right now, and I have to say I'm happy with it. If you if you do the analog processing, like the analog summing thing, it sounds great, you know. Cool. And the working flow is is so it's so much better. I have so much more fun doing music right now. It's I changed two months ago and. It's really fun again working in the studio because logic was really pain in the ass sometimes for me. Yeah, the automation and all this stuff. Yeah, it's really like clocking you your reverb like in a quarter beat too late and everything. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck, you know? I just let professional <laughs> program like automation have to be working. <laughs> I was really wondering. Yeah, yeah and I use, uh, I have two analogs since um, the Little Fatty, MOOC Little Fatty, mm -hmm. and Nord Stage 88, which is like my master keyboard. And um, yeah, it was like the MIDI key was an innovation. All the time. Yeah, you just use it as a MIDI controller, yeah. not so much for the. But I use it also as a piano if you have people yeah, yeah. to come play piano yeah. and stuff, you know. And I st just built a new studio. I have like a new company, and we built 18 studios, 18 recording studios. And my studio also going to be a new recording studio. So I'm just saving some money for a new mixing desk. But it's going to take some while to I can buy that one. I want to have. <laughs> It's an uh, Zell AM1. It's it's like a little uh, German brand. They are from western part of Germany, and they build like everything by themselves. The basic um, it's like modular, 
so you can always buy like some more channels. I get four mono channels, four stereo channels, and like one master sections, and it's about like 30k. So it's just a small mixing desk, but very expensive. <laughs> yeah. And what did you guys uh, start with at the beginning? What did you work on? I know you said reason a little bit, but mm. in terms of gear or studio or was it like very modest? It was like a little uh, Dell uh, PC, lap, uh, PC tower and one screen, one test cam. What's it called? Test like a small two uh, channel. US interface. antenna two or something yeah. like that? Yeah. And, um, and an Oxygen A. Oxygen? Master keyboard. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. And that's it. I saw it was and like actually Cubase back in the days then. It was a correct version actually, huh? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, know, you know they're gonna bleep it out. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, you know what? Hey, honestly, I have the correct <laughs> version, less problems than even the official version because you need like a, the flash drive for that one, that one yeah, copy the protection. Don't, they, no, but uh, the, uh, the thing is, they, they <laughs> usually don't. They do usually don't because like they, are okay, they are fine if you start doing your music with the correct yeah. version because you know they are happy if you get into the program and later yeah. on you're gonna buy it if you can afford it. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's the point. There was this one cracking guy. It's called uh, H2O. Try before I buy, <laughs> 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 exactly. and everyone knows it, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, yeah. It was f S, yeah, SX3. SX3, exactly, exactly, exactly. And um, when you guys finish a track, do you master it yourself, or do you like to send it out to someone specific, or just let the label take care of it? Well, we have. We tried. Uh, we always have a mastering process in yeah. the end. That's for sure. I do usually my own mastering just to be able to play it in the club. You know, I have enough loudness, you know, yeah. enough thickness. But we tried out all kinds of uh, mastering engineers in Germ uh, in, in Berlin, like Calix mastering, uh, Dublitz mastering, um, some others from Frankfurt and UK. And now Mar I don't know if you know Martin Ira. Yeah. He does yeah. Klingt from yeah. label. He's my partner in the new business. And he's a mastering engineer too, and he's got his studio next to my studio, so it's USB stick, next door, mastering, ready. So okay. yeah. it's pretty comfortable right now. And, and can you tell us a bit about the process that you like to do? For example, just... In the mastering process? Yeah, in your mastering, just what you like to do to get kind of yeah, first the I mean sound like for the, the gigs. The most important, in my opinion, is the mixing process before. So the mixing has to be really good, so you can really reach another top level of mastering. And... Um, I never, I never mix too loud, so I'm really like careful with the mixing process first. So like I'm always like minus four dB under level. Okay. And um, in RMS terms, like how much? Sixteen seventy, right? Yeah, exactly. And um, um, if I do it myself, I use the UAD plugins mainly, the massive passive EQ. Just you know, you can take uh, like a, a preset, like dance preset, and then you just adjust it to your mm -hmm. kind of you know what you hear. You want to have more bass usually with that preset, and I use a um, the Neve thirty. I forget the name. It's a Neve uh, compressor limiter. Also UAD. Also UAD. Yeah. So it's only like two plugins actually. Okay. And I just do it like you know how I hear it, how I want to hear it. And in the mix, you said that it's very important to keep the levels. What do you look for exactly, in the level-wise? No red, wise <laughs> <that> <laughs> <laughs> no red It's I take a lot of time for mixing actually, and and you know I tried it a lot. Uh, this the, the the difference between this analog summing and the internal summing, it's such a huge difference. So already when I'm going out with a um, on a two bus internal summing, and I do the same with the same levels on an analog summing, I have so much more headroom. So I can just recommend everybody like go ahead, like go ahead with analog summing. Um, I usually just really mix with, I have an, the RME to totalizer, which is a meter, mm -hmm. like a Analyze. software meter yeah. analyzer. And I just like really look, okay, you always have like a little bit more on the bass part with us. And then I just try to really, if it's about the, the visual uh, thing, I just try to have like a real nice all over um, even frequential, yeah. Yeah, that you, you see yeah. it kind of even on all frequencies yeah, exactly. yeah. with more uh, emphasis on like the bass or the lower the parts bass. usually. Yeah. yeah. And I have two reference speakers. I have also the same, the um, Adam S3XH as my main monitor speakers. And I have the Dune Audio BM6 with uh, sub 10, I think, 
so this is like it used to be my um, reference for like four years that doing audio. I really know them well, but I prefer the other ones now, the Adams now. So if I always switch back and forth to both speakers and I compare how I you know know the sound from the old speakers to the new speakers, it's a big difference actually in sound. But this is a process of you know like if I get a track, it's like a process of two hours mixing. I try to always with Con like constant mixing. Speakers. Mm -hmm. Headphones are sometimes so clear. Can you like, for example, reverbs and all that stuff? You can listen better on headphones sometimes. Depends on your room. Get the yeah. 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 No, but I, th I think it's more clear. Also, you also you hear like left and right, like separated, you know, because you have two speakers. You have right, also left sometimes a little bit. So it's good to, for like panning out stuff, to have like just the headphones. Yeah, that's true. You know, because you have three like left and right. Yeah. That's it. So it's good. For, like it's for me more important than like to, um, to monitor. And um, how do you decide that the track is finished and it's good to send to the label? Like, wha after you test it out, or uh, yeah, I would say that's that's the final, uh, yeah. you the know, final uh, verdict. The hands in the air in the club, and well, it's it's not m about the reaction of the people. It's more like how uh, how I hear it on the sound system, and I usually try to play it on a good sound system where you know, okay, that's a good sound system, also good monitor sound system, and if this makes us happy, it's good. Yeah. And um, An important part today of being an artist is uh, promoting and sending out music. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about this process for you and how, how it's working today and how it worked at the start? Well, I mean, we are not sending out music anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, like, it's... it's two different things actually now. I mean, promoting yourself is the most important right now. If you want to be a successful artist, if you want to be, you know, uh, if you want to let people see you and hear you, you have to work for it hard. But I would say like promoting, like promotion and marketing is unfortunately actually almost more important than doing the music, which is sad somehow, but it's how it is, you know, yeah, it's part of this whole business. So the whole socializing networking is really important. You, you mean like in the past, I, I remember if you was running around and flyering and yeah, we did our own promotion. Yeah, do our own promotion. Today they have just Facebook, you know, and, and you reach like a thousand times more people than with your flyer, like in the past, you know, you reach like people around the world. But actually really cool is, but sometimes also like, you know, like, so it's maybe my opinion, but the underground stuff is going a little away, you know, you, they, they, you know everything already, you know, you know all the parties, you know all the pictures, you know everything. I mean, it's nice to, 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 to have that, and it's also really important. But sometimes I miss a little bit to found somewhere like in a record store, like a flyer, and say, ooh, so what is that, you know? So, so like a little bit of underground shit, you know? So you yeah. find out the new club, and today you know everything already. Yeah. So you know how it is also there without being there. It lost, <laughs> a, bit of, it lost a bit of the mystery. Yeah, it yeah. lost a little bit yeah, of the mystery. It's, it's, uh, actually, it's growing again, this kind of mystery, because you know, you have like some of these record labels, they only release vinyl. They don't send out any promo, they don't advertise at all. So. Especially when you have this kind of like promotion and marketing boom, especially then there are like really a lot of idealistic artists out there who just say, okay, I want to <coughs> keep it low, you know. But I think these days tools like SoundCloud and uh, like, uh, yeah, especially like these kind of music platforms, they are <coughs> really good for promoting yourself as an artist. We have examples in Germany. I don't know if you know this guy, like Ale Farben. Ale Farben. He, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. he just gained like, I don't know how many thousands of, of SoundCloud followers, like I think way more than we have, just by uploading constantly his his sets and his tracks on, on, on SoundCloud. And he expanded to such a big followership, he's playing all the big festivals right now. You know, just through that actually. So he did it all by himself. Yeah. So I mean, they're like, with all these like social platforms, music platforms and all this internet thing, it's there's so many possibilities going on to promote yourself. This was kind of nice, of course, you know, like to, to have that. But um, in the past, you're going like with some records under your arm you know, to the record store. Yeah, so we like went to labels. We went to Beatbridge Control. Can you sell it for me? Gave our <laughs> so the days were like really easy. I don't know, but you know, you, it was different back in the days for sure. Uh, yeah. But it's, I think it's like SoundCloud and all these uh, um, platforms are good. Yeah, also, Facebook promote yourself, is fucking important. Bring right. yourself out there. And then if you if you got the next step, if you are already recognized, it's important to mark like have a proper marketing for sure. We are lucky we have a management right now. 
which does all that for us, more or less. So they take manager? care of all your... Sorry? Who is your manager? Markoma. Markoma, Marco Scholz. He only manages us and, and Mandy. It's very small, like two... No, like Marco right now. No, no, no. Marco. Uh, Marco. And um, he came, actually he came to us two years ago and, he, you know, he and what made, a, made an appointment with <laughs> us. Do you need a manager? <laughs> You know, it's like in the morning at six in the morning, I get at a bar drunk and someone comes to you and is like, hey, actually, guys, you need a manager? Yeah, of course, you. <laughs> <laughs> right now? No. Later? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but Tassi found out he was, he was managing and uh, working for Paul van Dyck before, like, you know, and... Like, oh. yeah, he used to do bookings for him. Yeah, he used to do bookings. He's like, wow. So he came to us, maybe actually, and, and, and he, we were, like, really skeptical. We were like, oh, a manager? Mm -hmm. You have to spend money for that, and... and you know, I mean, it's it's okay right now. Why should we, you know, why should we do it? And since yeah. actually, the reason why we accepted was, he told us, okay, I'm gonna take all the like bullshit work you don't want, like all this business stuff you don't want to do. I'm gonna take it away from you. I'm yeah. gonna take care of that, so you can make music. That was at this point, it was like what we wanted. You know, we wanted to do have, we want to have more time for ourselves for our music. Mm -hmm. What happened? The exact opposite. <laughs> since then we do less music and less music and more and more business. That's actually how it is. And that's part of the yeah. quotation marks success. It was a little hard for me to give it away, you know, because I like to, uh, like, you know, we both like to have the picture for Facebook, you know, and you can control like a little bit how you, how you're going outside, you know, with your style and everything, yeah. you know, and he said like, yeah, I can also do like that and that and that for you. And I said, but then I was always like a little pissed. I was like, hey, man, no, we had to you can't post it, you know, like it's not possible. And he said like, well, just a post. I said, no, it's not just a post. It's a post, you know, I, uh, I'm behind or we behind yeah, it. It's yeah. personal. It's personal, you know. Yeah. So then wrote Anna, like if you post something and say management or something, they said, hey, but it's also sh shitty, you know. No, but he, he no, he learned. Yeah, yeah he learned. We, you know, how it, we took, it took really like a long until now actually yeah. that we really told him what we want, how we want yeah. to be, how we want to appear to people, right. you know. To make it more personal. To more yeah, yeah. yeah. still, you know, it, it should not look as, mean like just as, a, as a marketing act. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, because the people know, you know, they're reading, some, yeah. they're reading something on Facebook, they know, like, oh, that's not the guys, you know, it's like just the advertising shit from his management, you know, it's, it's, it's also fucking uncool. When I saw this on other artists, they're posting the management and something, I always think, fuck, fuck off, you know, that's your Facebook page and you have to, you know, you have to control it, you know, that's something else that have to be on Facebook, but, you know, it's like you an um, interface to the crowd, your connection to the crowd or to the people. Yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit important, I, th I think. And it's also for the people important. When they not find out oh, there's someone writing for you and then it's also shit, you know, like, I think it's not nice. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you completely. And um, do you have uh, any tips or suggestions for artists that are in the beginning of their career? Just any general wisdom? <laughs> Work hard, play hard. I don't know. I mean, like no, like seriously, work hard. That's that's my yeah. best advice I can give. I mean, yeah, we give. I, my, I work like honestly seven days a week, and I get home on a Sunday evening. I partly go to the studio, and uh, I get up on Monday morning at seven. And this like and all day just work. music and music promotion, and, and business, promotion, business, yeah. business, and and I mean I have another business as I said, and this like takes a lot of my time right now. But it's all, it has to be all for the fun, so you always have to enjoy it and then it's okay. I mean, I do it with pleasure. Yeah. Luckily, I'm happy about that, you know. Mm -hmm. And yeah, for sure it's stressful, but it's yeah. fun. You have to give up some stuff, okay, of course, you know. You can't be like a, f like a hairdresser and like a DJ next to it. So you have to, if you want to do it professional. You used to be a chef, actually, so. Yeah, <laughs> I was a chef and, you know, like, isn't, you know, I have so many friends that always also asking me, hey Thomas, why do you don't book us at the Watergate, for example, or like why we can do like that? I said, yeah, what are you doing? He said, like, yeah, I work in H&M. And that one is like a hairdresser, and I said, like, yeah, but who's from, from you guys is DJ, you know? So yeah, like, I have like two times a week. And I said, like, no, that's like music business, it's not like two times a week, like in the evening. Yeah, yeah. It's like from Monday till Sunday, you know? Yeah. So and you have to give up some stuff, because I also do it, and Tassi do it, and we expect it from everyone, they, they, they want to work with us, the same, you know? Because yeah. like music business is not really like it's like a fucking asshole, you know. If you're not three weeks there, then some people forget you, you know. So you know how it is. How fast the whole scenery is, like the whole business, you know. Like I mean, like songs that you know from four weeks before you didn't know today. So like, what yeah. you like this one or like you know half year ago you forgot everything. You know you have to be always updated and cool and and you can't do it when you do something else. So you have to be like 100% focusing on it. I mean, if you decide, I want to be a DJ and I want to start a career. I think everyone can do it, 
yeah. art teacher or musician or artist in general, yeah. I think. It's, Everyone can it's, do it, it's, but it's, it's, um, it's, you have to be like, it's a certain a lot of pressure. way of life. Definitely. Yeah, you have yeah. to yeah. devote it's your life to it. Yeah, so the hard girlfriend and everything. You know, like oh, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I told your parents, like, hey, I want to be a musician. It's like, my mom, like, oh, God, musician. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> that's what you call music? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, like, take the music. They always do people do take drugs, and, you know, they don't sleep. And, uh, yeah, no, it's not always like that. <laughs> and uh, so now we'll take some questions from, uh, from the crowd here. Hi. <coughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for choosing Israel for for your 10th anniversary. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, about an album, yeah. okay? Uh, is it good today to release an album and not an EP? Well, I think you, sh you should... For, for promoting? Yes, I think, uh, in my opinion. An album is always interesting for press and media, and it's always interesting for you to show yourself or to show you as an artist to the crowd. I think it's more important, like in the beginning you should, as I said before, you should create your signature in sound, in signature in, in DJing also, you know, if you're a DJ. And uh, an album is, uh, if you have the, the, the luck that you find a label for that, because like these days labels are not really <coughs> always interested in albums because there's a lot of money, you know, they have work. to spend and work. Um, but if you get the chance to release an album, you should do it and you should use it as a platform for your musical spectrum obviously okay. and and as i said it's interesting for press because yeah. you know they like it you have to ask yourself what, what what makes you better or like special from all the other guys you know like promoters want to work with like an album like an album to a sounds nice you know you can make special interviews through it like as Autotlo said you know you have like pictures of that make make mostly like make for an album nice artwork you know it's like more like the whole stuff what you can work with it but the ep I mean, like, there's thousand EPs every day, you know, it's like, like a drop and on a stone, like, you know, like, and, and sometimes, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly, nice. exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, and about, uh, what do you, what do you use for your tracks, uh, samples, or are you making your own sounds? Both. 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 As I mean, like, for percuss percussive sounds, I use samples. No, okay. no, <laughs> 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 <Not really. laughs> But for, for, like, hook lines, bass lines, I use, uh, Usually, like 90%, yeah. I use synth. You can control it better. Yeah. Like you said, albino, what else? Omnisphere, Spectrosonics, um, Silent. Silent. Silent one, um. I used the Arturia package, like all the ARC 2600. All the Arturia? Mm, not all of them, but I have them all. And some, you know, it's I have actually a pretty big uh, amount of uh, synthesizer collection. I can't tell you the everything best because best <laughs> It's the reason because yeah. you wake up at seven in the morning, you boot his computer, and at twelve is it ready. You know, it's <laughs> 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 no, not like that. Are, are there but uh, I also like the microtonic, actually, like this noisy uh, little. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Drums, drum, oh. drum synthesizer. Yeah, it's like I, I don't use it for drums, but I use it for like more like this noisy stuff, like the noise. White noise. Yeah, pump, for pumping white noisy things, you know, and breaks like or at least with a side chain, something like that. It's nice. I like it. Any other questions? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah, yeah. So, covered it all. so who's DJ actually from you guys? Everyone? No. Not everyone. Oh, not that many. No, oh. not that much. And, you? and someone with vinyl still? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have some. I have some. Uh, yeah, I have also at home. You know, when you're making after parties at my place, oh, you're playing vinyl. Play, so, but play towels, you know. Uh, exactly. And who uses tractor from you guys? Like no, like you. But you play CDs then mainly or CDs? CDs yeah. Okay. And can you mostly live. Mostly live? Are you DJing with live? DJing with live. Is this right? working well? Yeah. It's working wonderful. Yeah. And so which controller do you use? So, but you prepare yeah. all your sets. Before? I use the I using the Core Q. Oh yeah. Nano Q. Yeah. Uh, I don't need any headphones. Yeah. Mm. I, I do it all at home and free to listen uh, at the. At the club. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But you have your all the whole music library with you, or you have like a prepared set? Uh, no, only prepared tracks. Okay, prepared tracks, and then you. Yeah, you yeah. have to work them before everything. Yeah, yeah of course. The project. Of course. And I'm uh, always a little bit afraid of it to, to say like. Uh, I mean, it's the same. And yeah, you're right. No, it's stupid. What I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm thinking. So you have to. If you're not prepared, you have like a totally different party than what you expected. 
<laughs> you don't have your music, but you have it in the end, yeah. you know? So it's like... I know the track, the, the track. Yeah, of course. So you have also your folders, of, for example. And, uh, yeah, it's much easier. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. and can you tell us a little bit also about uh, your uh, DJ setup and what you like to use uh, in your sets? Is it working? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, uh, afterwards yeah. we'll hear a demonstration. But can we see everything? No, or can we move that camera also? Okay. Okay. Well, um, Hi, what do you guys want to see? Well, Maybe the whole spot. table. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not working. Okay, I just. Well, we always have we always use two laptops, two yeah. tractor um, Scratch Pro systems. Thomas is also using the machine. I use um, two decks, like two track decks, and one uh, remix deck. So I use the F1. Maybe I don't know if you guys know that one. So it's like a little uh, sample tool mixer. I can show you. So I prepare all my um, remix deck samples. I always have like one remix deck which contains four by uh, sixty-four samples. Could be like um, you know, like single single shots. Uh, can be like loops. Can be um, some effect sounds. I can show you some quick. So I have this. So you can also pitch your, your samples in the uh, mixer. So I have this one sound, this is the original, the original um, harmony. And then you just pitch it and you can follow up like with a certain... Yeah, this is actually the, the dump fire, like the grindhouse tool sound. <laughs> then I have a self-programmed touch OSC controller. And I just contr um, programmed like another... Um, X1 controller, but only the effects section with it, and I can. By the way, uh, how do you how do you connect it to the Mac? The, uh, it's wireless. Oh. Okay. It was like you just um, you just open a new uh, network and connect with the with the uh, iPad. Oh, to it. They, you, you use Apple with it? No, no, this is on Tractor. Oh, okay. It's all on Tractor, yeah. So uh, so I can use like, for example, I have like. A Reverb on it now, or oh, I just take a tape delay. So you can also like choose like all kinds of effects you have on the on the on the tractor library. Um, this, and then I have my two regular track decks, which is just in this case I have to change. So I mean, both laptops are not synced together. So we don't have a, a, a wireless or Ethernet sync. We just, you know, we know the tempo and you can listen. We tried, it takes like, uh, we tried a week, you know, to sync both laptops. Yeah, it didn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> it it's didn't it's, work it's really better to like tweak to one start. <laughs> we don't do it as well, but it's even easier than to synchronize the laptops. I mean, we, we, both, we both started with minor, so we learned how to beat match yeah. records. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's very simple, actually. I use two track tags. If I want to do my effects, I have usually like a reverb on a delay effect on my two um, X1 effects, which I need to check the... Oh, no, sorry. These are the two main effects I'm using, actually. It's mainly enough because I'm also using all my uh, samples here, yeah. you know, as a add-on on the. Yeah, but DJ I think set. like for DJing, it's like reverb and delay, like the most emulated flanging, you know. But in the end, it's like yeah, they have they delay have delay. some nice innovative uh, effects on Tractor, but it's. Have you never used it? I don't really need it. No. It's like what, what like the stuff I want to do, I'm okay with what I have here, and I don't like to change all the times my my effects because it takes me too much time. <laughs> you know, but yeah, that's mainly my setup and. Yeah, my is like the, uh, with, the, with, the <laughs> with the X1 is the same actually, you know, the same effects. I can put something on here. So, and I use also like, uh, and I have like breaks or something, is my filter on actually? Oh, yeah. Then I use also like this reverb. Is it a headphone? No. Yeah. Oh, but how do you need filter then? Ah, I like that one. Yeah, we never played on this 42 sorry. mixer. It's a new mixer. <laughs> it's really not a new one, but it's, we never had that one. For us, it, for us it's new. We just, just know the, uh, what the what 92. Second, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but where's the sound right now? Ah, so it is like a bit. <laughs> what is that then? 
Das ist der Headphone, das ist ein Filter. Was hat das? Ja, ist ein Filter. Ja, wo ist denn der? Achso, hier, okay, sorry. Okay. <lacht> <lacht> yeah, I've owned like this reverb stuff and, and sometimes I use the machine and in the, in the pedal mode, like that stuff, you know, you, if you have like a nice break or something, then you can, uh, this is maybe not the best one. Um, sometimes I use like this, um, this cymbal sounds or like other sounds to, to make like, um, like put some sounds actually in the songs, or I use like in the step mode. It was like that. I have to change it with my setup here. Yeah, this is you know, the problem is with this thing sometimes. The this not always like really. I mean, I try to zoom the machine, and sometimes it goes a little fast or oh, too slow. So then you have to start with the button again and then I change the beat. Like a quarter or like a half beat, you know? Then you're totally wrong, so I have to do it again. Ah, okay. So this is like from the machine right now, the hi-hat. You can use like tools, you know, like claps. Or I make like six and stuff like... But I make it always up to the party, you know, like I have no prepared uh, sets or something, it's just like how it is in this moment, you know, you have a nice break or something. Then I put like like the six on the sound, like push it up with the effect or something, put it out, or use like just claps. Then, like, then you use like the, the, the effects here. Okay, but uh, yeah, that's like how I use it. So it's just a tool to give like all the tracks like an extra the special thing, you know, like because sometimes I was a little bored with the tracks, you know. I say like in this part I can be like a hi hat or like a clap, and then I use my own ones. So, but I make it, but I never prepare something. I do just how I am. Sometimes totally drunk and <laughs> touch everything, you know, and uh, yeah, it's nice to have this, you know. Thank you very much. So it makes like the whole static synchronized work sometimes a little bit like it's more like punk rock, you know, or like a demo tape from a garage or something. You know, this is, I really like it. It makes it a little bit, um, yeah, there's more flow, more more personality inside, and also like task with uh, F1. Mm -hmm. Then you because have, you like have different kids or uh, I have different kids. Yeah, I have like here, for like example, like some acid poly kids here. And, you know, <laughs> Like just vocals or like uh, special like this high for example is my favorite high high uh, than clap ever and yeah then high it's congers everything it's not really sorted it's more like I have groups like with like more harder high hats and harder claps and like groups with, like with softer shakers and like you know it's a little bit sorted but not really it's not I know where it is I you have just like four groups that's it that's what I mean if I have too much. I can't choose again. They're not horrible. Or well, mostly from this four groups I use one. So if I'm really good and, and like this day I have a good night, it's like oh I took a second one or third one. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> so less is more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that's well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not always. <laughs> mostly. <laughs> okay. Anyone want to ask a final uh, question? Uh, when you producing the same kick, the same uh, hi-hat, the same clap, every no. single no. track you use different? Yeah, of course. I mean, maybe we used one kick twice. Really? You, you do it? No. Maybe, I said maybe, I don't know, but yeah, usually but then, then we start with another one. Scratch. There's no, there's no template no. Of, of sounds we, we, we use when we start a track. It's not like that. We always start like kick, you know, like we check all our sound libraries. And it's also like, you know, it depends what kind of mood we have, you know, like after uh, you know, uh, exhaustive uh, weekend, we are like, oh yeah, let's do it like a softer kick tonight, you know, for today. <laughs> after, after gym, you know, you yeah, have like techno. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> no, you mean like... So it's always like yeah. from scratch. Yeah, it has to be different, otherwise you get also bored. We also like stacking some stuff, you know, like like three kicks sometimes, you know, like... Yeah. Uh, the last track, what we're doing, or uh, like, what I do in my studios was like, um, actually like a sleeping kick drum. It was very nice. But there was not enough attack. So 
So, and I took like a digital bass drum from a sample kit and cut the attack out and put it like on this Chris Lean bass drum and you know like to build up a little bit the kick drums because I don't build so much like but the kick drums are really important. You know like it's like the basic. You know it's like the that makes like techno. You know and I think it's like most important thing for me in my eyes. You know like house music is a little bit different. Maybe there's like the sound is more important or like vocals or something. But I think it's dance music. Techno is just living from 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 power and no, so kick drums important. So that's what I say from my opinion. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what BPM do you use? One twenty eight. Sorry. BPM. BPM. One twenty eight, one twenty nine. Between one twenty two and one twenty thirty, right? Depends. I mean, one twenty eight is fast, in my opinion. Oh. Uh, you mean for producing or for DJing? Producing. Producing. It's between one twenty three and we did one thirty. No. But that's rare. The nice thing is, if you're a bit slow, you have more space between the um, uh. bass drums. You know, you can put more elements inside. Yeah. But on the other side, it's also true. like, and you have more to you, are, oh, you have to follow oh. the right ones, so you have more work in the end. You know, like yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's up to the mood. You know, I didn't if, you saw it like that. <laughs> if you want to make like a really fast track, <laughs> like say like, oh, I need a release. <laughs> Maybe you choose like out of thirty. I never saw it like that. <laughs> No, it's not like that. But I have something to say. Sometimes they say, you have like a, like, a beat, like a track with 122, and I think, mm, it's nice, it's missing something. You know, make it a little faster, and I'll, <laughs> that's fine, you know? <laughs> because the space is okay, like, it's not, yeah, it's growing less. And how so much do you do uh, doing one track, or how much time it takes? Hey, uh, sometimes I had, I had once, I need five well, hours, and then we have like, uh, we're sitting like three weeks, like starting again and again and again. Project well, uh, mainly, like, mainly when we do remixes, it takes us a long time. Oh, God, man. Remixes is it's I hate, I hate it. it. <laughs> 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 it's well, remixing is no. The thing is, like, you know, there's like remixes, but you never expect. It's like, ah, can we do it? It's going really quick, and it's also really good in the end. So then you have like something, for example, like last time we had like uh, Stefan Botzin, like the Phobos one. It was horrible. Like nothing really worked. You know, like, we had like the nice basics, but like the sound in the end. I mean, maybe someone knows uh, Phobos. I have from it here. Yeah, yeah. It may. <laughs> and you know, it's like the, the synthesizer is not really in time, it's going faster, slower, faster, slower, and like the time stretching with logic was horrible. You can't bring it in the right tempo. Well, the, no, origi the original it takes is like actually. Like one and a half week to bring it like in this tempo. That's the original sound, and like the whole track was. I don't know if you know Phobos. It was a very successful track back in the days from him, and yeah. it's, very, it's very emotional, like really like this yeah, yeah, bass, yeah. And, and like just a. A little beat around it, more or less, and it's so significant that you can't. You have to use. You have to use that sound. Yeah. But you don't know how. So we cut it out. Yeah. And we only God, we had like inside. we only had like. <laughs> and we had this basic beat, let's say, with a bass line, yeah. and we couldn't fit it in. Yeah. So we just decided to cut it out. Build up in the like own track, on only own track, and just do the the remix part in the break. So, <laughs> well, and some, you know, just, you know, some introduction sounds. So, that's a very significant sound. It's like from the original, but we like uh, distorted it and just made it like really standing there alone. Oh, a bit for sure. And it works. Uh, we didn't, you know, it wasn't yeah. on purpose, but it works so well in the club that we were like, okay, well. that was by accident. Yeah, it didn't <laughs> also try like this the city <laughs> sound, always putting the in, in the beat, you know, but it doesn't work out. And then it's actually like it's coming as a reverse, and then the whole break is actually so the original. <laughs> But then, yeah, then we delay it in the end, and then we lost the right timing. And then it's pampered again. But, but it, fit, it fits in the end because, like, we open the delay, you know, and it, like the sound doesn't end like that in the end, you know, like yeah. it's like not the original sound because yeah. it was not in time again. Right on. Ah, uh, oh, it was a. I mean, the, the end product is nice, but the work to it. Can you imagine listening like, like, four like, weeks. like four weeks, like every day, this fucking sound like. Yeah, but it's like four <laughs> weeks. It's four weeks with like almost twenty versions. You know, we had the same thing now 
Oh, for the like remix for Paul Kalkbrenner, we did the remix. Da, das ist auch, ja. And I mean, I, do you know Paul Kalkbrenner? Yes. Yeah. No. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm just asking, yeah. you know. It's, it's, he has a very significant <laughs> sound and it's, it's, you get the parts and it's, you know, whatever you want to do with the sounds, it always sounds like Paul Kalkbrenner. Yeah, and you can't hard, yeah. get your idea on these sounds. So it's, we had, um, it's, uh, the track is called The Gezapel. And it has like this melody and, and, and all these sounds and all these very sig significant Paul Kalkbrenner sounds. And we tried to do it very simple in the beginning, just do another beat under it and take like two melodies out and take this as the original part. But then it still sounds, you can't get your yeah. sound in there. It's impossible, you know? And then we had 10 versions. The 10th tenth, tenth version <laughs> is the version where we just use one sound a little bit and the rest is a complete different <laughs> new track. Yeah. And We're happy with it now. With know, it's, it, it took us. Uh, it's remixing is yeah. my opinion. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, it's also important to do. No, it. for like for example, we don't remix a lot anymore. But for Paul, he's a friend of us, and we played with him the tour, and he offered us, and we said, okay, it's it's more a friend thing in, yeah. in, this, in this case. Yeah, for example, like sorry, <laughs> <laughs> an eye for an eye. Yeah, yeah, more or less. Yeah. For, for example, like the Slam a Lifetime uh, song, you know, it was like. A Big favorite for us, like also when we was young, we listened to it and they said like, hey, we want a remix like that stuff. Yeah, and that worked actually really well. I don't know why. No, but I actually decided for myself, I don't want to remix dance like uh, um, techno or house tracks anymore because it doesn't make sense to me. I don't, I don't see it. You know, it takes too much time for yeah. a usually not really satisfying product. Yeah, it's like also I, I think it makes sense, and that's how it used to be back in the days, more or less. To remix some. You have, may, let's say, you have a pop track or. Um, rock track or like some whatever different genre mm. and you do a track in your genre out of it mm. a new interpretation of the track in your genre and that's what i'm <laughs> aiming for actually exactly. I don't it have to be like that no i don't see the sense the remix stuff is mostly today like uh, in the days like if you have a nice track and you want to hold this level long it's like it's for example pirates of the caribbean now the first two uh, parts was really nice and the rest one is just a name to drop it to drop it to drop it and make it there's a remix stuff the same sometimes you know or like with a bad release To make it nicer with a, with a good name of a remix. So it it's it sounds stupid, mainly, yeah. but it's name dropping. It's like how it is sometimes, you know? And that's the thing, it's not the, the nice way to remix, you know? It's, it's also not the sense of remixing, you know? I see it like an old track, like an old techno track. I, I yeah, agree with it, like the, the Lifetime shit or something, you know? Yeah. It's good. But then you choose it. Then you choose it, yeah. But like, like a new track and then a remix directly, you know? Because I, I don't know, it for makes my me no sense at all. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we at this point we can decide right now. But uh, if you guys getting like an offer for a nice remix, do it. <laughs> well, yeah, if you get an idea, if you, I mean, yeah. it's, no, seriously, I mean, you should choose the, the the or you should choose the offer if you get an idea when you get the track and you could imagine, okay, I can mm. do my version out of it. We thought we could do an <laughs> version easily from Paul's track, but it wasn't that easy. Nah, yeah, but in the beginning was it also like another track, yeah, okay, and then right. we get that one. It's like, <laughs> uh. This is this takes a lot of time of my time during the week. I really research a lot on new music. I um, I actually listen to a lot of promo I get. It's you know I have um, like um, special promo agencies where I know okay if they send me something it's ni it's ninety percent something for me. So the hard work is done for you. The e first no, this is no no. I do everything on my own, but I have like you know you have exclusive. Promo. It's like a promo agency from UK. If they send me something, I know it's something I usually like. You know, um, so I take at least I don't know like five hours per week to get new music. I go a lot on Beatport. I discover new uh, artists, like all the new releases, and then you get like all these follow-up um, uh, recommendations and stuff. So I really spend a lot of time, and I actually have every week I have about something between 30 and 60 new tracks. I'm not always playing them all, but I'm play, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could play them and I could fit them in, mm. but it's uh, 60 tracks out of thousands. not thousands, but a lot, yeah. really. To 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 a label or? Well, the best, the best is to if you get my private email, and then I usually <laughs> uh, no, it's, it doesn't. I don't want to sound stupid, but that's how it is because, you know, 
you could send it on Facebook, and on Facebook there are like th seriously thousands of messages, and you don't get it on Facebook, even if you post it on the wall. It doesn't make sense. So, um, it's really hard actually. I can't, you know, I, I, like can, I can give you my email address, but I'm not, I don't know if you're yeah, seriously interested like in sending me something. Yeah, personally, like with a flash drive, and you play somewhere and you go yeah. there and say, like, here, it's a flash drive. And I took it and flash then drive, yes, CDs, yeah, no. Nice yeah, it's CDs, like, I have no CD on it here. Sorry? So you have a nice collection of flash drives from all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have, I have, you can't imagine, I have at home, like... I can like show you mine, actually. Oh, <laughs> like, the, like, the way to my bathroom, you know, there's, like, all those flash drives on it. It's like a bundle of, like, flash drives, unbelievable. <laughs> But I listen to all of them. You never have to buy one. Yeah. Nah, most of like one year, but two usually not the good ones, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not the expensive ones, you know, yeah. for the CDJ. Yeah, but uh, there's so many fucking funny flash drives, like, it looks like uh, like this uh, emergency kit from the plane. Yeah, I know. Or or <laughs> <laughs> like, they bring like, the nicest flash drives ever, you know, like, like with a whole context and pictures on it. And, oh. But it's nice. I like it. I prefer it. It's better than the donut link. So I don't know yeah. what I do. Well, I mean, we start a new label now. In, I mean, we started it actually, but it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be um, present in the beginning of next year, and that's how labels usually do it. They um, have their SoundCloud um, profile. What and is the name? Sorry, what is the name? I'm not telling you right <laughs> now. <laughs> that's too early right now. Um, so, and there we're gonna set up like this demo box, you know, and you know, if you decide to do a label, you have to do A and R work. Mm. And I'm really looking forward to it. I uh, I'm, me too. I'm, um, I'm really curious how interest, like how people are gonna be interested in our yeah. platform we're gonna start. It's so as soon as this is done, I can recommend you to yeah. send something there. It feels also uh, nice to have like young people because I know how it, is, or how it was for us, you know, to. No, we both really interested yeah, in like new you music. Know, I listen I to new music. I always listen, listen at artists. home new music, uh, like all the SoundCloud. Yeah. Stuff and I, but I really like is like, oh, for example, how I search my music is also like, even to global radio, I listen at home like constantly in my bathroom, everywhere, and I listen sound. And just like when I say, like, at Shazam, with them, you know, like sometimes, you know, like, oh, nice. But I hear <laughs> not really, I, I mostly, I listen it not really like, I listen it next to something else, you know, I don't sitting there and listen it, I listen it like the whole day, and then I feel like, ooh, that's nice, you know, and then I take it somehow, or Shazam it somehow, you know. Because again, so far, so really, like after ten tracks, I get tired, like of listening to music, like always, like is it good? Is it not good? Is it good? Is it not good? Is it not really mine. I have to listen it uh, next to something else, like when I play PlayStation or like in the kitchen or I don't know. I have to listen it next well to something or sports. It was a smart step for Shazam to work with Beatboard. Yeah, of course. Sure. Agents, absolutely. I have so many times like behind the vocal when he's playing and he's turning around. Thomas, you Shazam a track? I read it. It's no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can buy it directly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, thank you guys very much. Give them a nice round of applause.